How's it going you sexy beast? As it has been requested multiple times on everything I use to make a YouTube video, I'll be showcasing all the programs that I use in order to get the highest production quality out of my machine and my own personal abilities, though they may be lacking. This particular video will be a quick run through of the programs and settings I use to record and render videos, but the majority of the programs I use come with a price tag, so I'll try and find some alternative software solutions if you're wanting to start off on the grand crusade of being a video game YouTuber. Everything discussed in this video will be linked in the description below for you to check out or download. So starting off, we'll need a program to record actual gameplay footage. If you're using an NVIDIA graphics card of a GTX 650 or later, you'll be able to use Shadowplay for free, which is a very, very good program to use for video capture, but it is extremely lacking on features in comparison to other recording software. Be sure to update your GeForce Experience client to make sure Shadowplay is running at optimal performance. If you're not using a GTX 650 graphics card or later, then you can check out Open Broadcasting Software. It's a free program, which is typically used for live streaming, but can also be used for local recordings, in which it has plenty of features for presentation or to make editing a lot, a lot easier. Onto the paid software, and the first one I recommend is Fraps. Fraps is what I started out on, what I grew up with, and what I fell in love with, but eventually became outdated compared to DX Story, which is what I use nowadays. I record DX Story with the Lagareth lossless codec with multi-threading enabled to help reduce the impact of recording in-game. I use YV12 mode and keep the frame rate at 30 frames per second since YouTube doesn't allow anything over 30 FPS. While file format is AVI and keep the scaling at 100%. My audio settings use virtual audio cable to create multiple channels so I can edit gameplay, Skype, or TeamSpeak, and my microphone all in separate channels. Regardless, set your default audio device as one channel and your microphone as another, and you'll be good to edit each separately in your editing software of choice. Since setting up virtual audio cable is a rather complicated process, I'll have to leave that to another video. Keep in mind that recording software is very CPU and hard drive speed intensive and will need solid components for both. The program I use for voiceovers, such as this one, is pretty simple. I've been using it ever since the beginning and will continue to use it for the foreseeable future. Audacity. It's a free program with plenty of audio settings, options, and transformations to fulfill any concept you have in your head. Before we do anything, we have to get the quality settings perfect, since we're indeed perfectionists. Go to Edit and select Preferences and Highlight Quality. I have my default sample rate at 44,100 Hz, which is about as high as you need to go. Anything higher is excessive and unnoticeable for the unwarranted file size and exporting times. Real-time conversion can be set to whichever you wish, as this is just the trial audio given whenever you listen to your recordings before exporting. But high quality conversion should be set to best. Go back to devices and make sure your microphone selected is set to two channels or stereo. Next is a little editing. Whenever I record, I leave about five seconds of silence at the beginning to use as a sample for noise removal. Once you're done with your recording, highlight those five seconds, go to Effect, Noise Removal, and select Get Noise Profile. Hit Control A, go back to Effect, Noise Removal, and hit OK. Typically, I do this once more just to make sure my computer fans and whatever else in the background are completely cut out of the audio, as well as that slight reverb that my office likes to put out on my voice. Once you're done editing, go to File Export, and you're good to go. Throw it onto an audio layer in your editing software and render away. Speaking of, what editing software should we use? We've got some gameplay recorded, and we want to make it look fancy and delicious for the YouTubes. There's a few programs we can use. First and foremost has to be Windows Movie Maker. Don't knock it, it's free, it's installed on just about every PC out there, and can get the job done with rather little hassle. The next free software you could use is VSDC, which is pretty much just like Final Cut Pro, but free. It's a bit more in-depth than Windows Movie Maker, but comes with a lot, a lot more features and options available for use in editing and rendering your videos to your liking. Lastly, which is what I use, is Sony Vegas Pro 12. This is by far the most in-depth program I've used in regards to editing my video footage and rendering it to certain specifications. 
The settings I use in Vegas allow me to render my videos using both my CPU and GPU and get 1440p quality on YouTube, which will assign it a higher bitrate or a higher visual quality to give you guys the best viewing experience. So we start with the properties, which is rather self-explanatory. Select the HD 1080-60i preset, change the frame rate to 30, and make sure that deinterlace method is set to none. Pixel aspect ratio is set to 1, full resolution rendering quality is set to best, and view transform is turned off. On my particular videos, I throw on a little color correction, which just drops the gamma by about 10%. It typically removes the white, murky, dusty look of first-person shooters that love to overlay on their game and helps pop out the colors slightly more. Once you're done editing your video and all that jazz, let's get it rendered. Go to File, Render As, and select the Internet HD 1080p setting under Main Concept AVC slash AAC, which renders out to an MP4 file. First and foremost, change the frame size to custom and set 2560 by 1440. This will yield you the potential to render videos in 1440p on YouTube. You could take it a step further and render the width as 3840 and the height as 2160 in order to get 2160p. Even though you're technically upscaling 1080p video footage since the resolution is much larger, YouTube assigns it a higher bitrate. This allows viewers with a higher internet connection to view a higher quality video of yours since YouTube compresses the hell out of our videos, which typically crushes the overall pixel quality. Back to the render settings. Frame rate is once again set to 30 frames per second, as it's the best setting to use if you play at 60 FPS and record at 30. The visible numbers are pretty delicious. Have the bitrate set at constant and have it vary between 30 million and up. I use 50 million, which increases the file size of the final product, but also makes the video have a pristine quality about it. Encode mode must be set to render using CUDA if you are using an NVIDIA graphics card, or OpenCL if you're using anything else. This will attempt to render the video with your graphics card alongside your processor, which should speed up the rendering process. Keep in mind that if your client does seem to crash while doing this, go ahead and set it to CPU. Not all graphics cards are able to mesh well with Sony Vegas. My latest Subscriber Sunday Q&A video came out to be about 11 minutes in length, which took an hour and 45 minutes to render and has a file size of 4 gigabytes. So lowering the bitrate will lower the overall quality, file size, as well as the render time. Rendering in 1080p will also help reduce the render time and file size as well if you're trying to conserve time or hard drive space. Lastly, we have to make some pretty pictures for the thumbnail of our YouTube video. As usual, you could just use MS Paint to make a picture of your choosing, but I'm sure you'll want a bit more finesse in your photo editing software. That's why I recommend using GIMP or GNU Image Manipulation Program, which is a very comprehensive image editing software. It's essentially Photoshop, but without a price tag. Personally, I indeed use Photoshop and find it to be quite a powerhouse when having to create PNG files for video overlays or making those delicious thumbnails. I typically make mine in 1920 by 1080 resolution just to get the highest visual fidelity as possible, but I'd recommend using 1280 by 720 since the maximum file size allowed on YouTube is 2 megabytes. There you have it you sexy beast, hopefully this video helped out a few of you to begin making YouTube videos or just give you some insight on all that goes into making one. Obviously everyone's method of recording, editing, rendering, and uploading are all different. This is just the way that I like to do it, and the way that I find works pretty well. I don't have a super fancy hex core processor or a Google Fiber internet connection, so this is by far my favorite compromise on quality and time, as it typically takes me about 3 hours to both render and upload the video after I've fully edited and acquired my final product. Toying around with resolution and bit rates will be the best way to find your own sweet spot for rendering and uploading, as video making for YouTube is quite a time intensive hobby. Hopefully you all enjoyed this video or found it informative, and if you did, please give it a big ass thumbs up. If you have any questions in regardings to the programs that I use, such as I missed a key point or anything of that matter, don't hesitate to ask in the comment section below. I'll try my best to help you out. Please favorite and share this video as it could be of use to anyone else looking to get into content producing on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed already, what's stopping you? Go ahead and subscribe. It's free.